There are a couple of situations when the JSON parse function can throw an error, and as a JavaScript developer, you're going to need to know about how to handle those errors when they crop up. So in this tutorial, I'm going to run you through a few examples of when this error can occur and how you might deal with it. So we're going to look at some examples in this simple web app that I've just created, but before we get started, let's just remind ourselves what the json.parse function actually does. And what it's doing in essence is taking a string representation of some JavaScript data structures, such as some arrays or some objects or even some primitive uh, data types as well, and converting it from that string uh, to an actual object or an array or whatever it is so that you can use it in your JavaScript code. So this is really helpful when you're taking some user input as a string or if you're sending some data via a network request, but you need to do this conversion process to get it from that string form into a JavaScript data structure that you can then use. Uh, and also there is the stringify function, which kind of does the opposite thing and takes uh, a JavaScript object or an array and converts it into a string so that you can send it via a network request, for example. So let's have a look at our example web app, and we're gonna look at the two types of errors uh, or two situations where you might get this error. And the first is when you're dealing with a string within your code uh, that represents some JSON data. So it's unlikely that you're going to be working with hard-coded strings within your code uh, because uh, you, there's no need to really, you just write it as a JavaScript object or an array for example, but you might want to take some user input uh, from the user on a web page, such as this form here, uh, and then use that to create a data uh, structure uh, in JavaScript, such as an array or just an object. And we've done this before in other projects uh, where you kind of take configuration details from a user. So that's one example of when you might want to take some JSON data from the user. So at the moment, if I just type in any sort of data into this uh, field, just some text, then we're getting loads of syntax errors in the console. And this is one of the examples of json.parse uh, throwing an error because it can't convert the string we're giving to it uh, into a, a reasonable data structure in JavaScript. So if we were to change that and put in an array, for example, just an empty array, then that works fine. That's valid JSON. Uh, and of course, we could have other things inside here, such as uh, objects as well. So we could say we've got a key value uh, object. Uh, and with the JSON, we do need to have uh, this double quotes around the uh, property names as well. Uh, but that would be converted, as you can see here in the console, into an array uh, with one singular object in there. Uh, so that's just to give you an example of uh, how the process works. But you can also see the sort of things that throw errors as well. Uh, sort, so if we'd missed a double quote at the end of the value, so we hadn't terminated that value uh, that's been passed in there, you can see we get a slightly different error, but we, it's a bit more helpful in terms of telling us what exactly is wrong, uh, but it's telling us that the JSON parse function has thrown an error because there's an unterminated string in there. So that's the first example of when a JSON.parse might throw an error. It's when we're passing in some user input, which basically isn't JSON data or is badly formatted JSON data. So how do we handle that within our code? Well, let's pop over to the code that we've got for that web app and I'm just running you through it really quickly. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, we're just getting the input element on the page. It's got this ID of JSON input. Uh, we're setting up an event listener to listen for input events. And then we're just straight away running the json.parse function on the value that's inside of the input element. It's a text area element. Uh, and then we're just trying to log that out to the console. And we also restringify it so that we can put it into the uh, UI uh, element, which is just a pre-formatted text block. So we want to kind of catch any errors that this json.parse function might throw. And unsurprisingly, what we do for that is to wrap this parse function in a try catch block. So I'm going to declare the object value variable here uh, and just leave it outside of the try catch block. So we've got it in scope for the rest of this uh, bit of code. And then we're going to try to run the parse function and then we'll catch any errors that occur. And what we want to do is if the json.parse function is successful, we want to assign the result, the data structure that it parses down to into this object value variable. 
So what do you do if you catch an error? Well, it really depends on what you want to happen within your user interface and within your app code. Sometimes what I like to do is just to put the object value to be an empty object. And then later on down in the rest of your code, if you've got another function which is expecting another property inside of this object value, for example, you might have like a username or something like that, then just do another check to see if that username is there. And if it's not, which it won't be in this case because it's an empty object, uh, then you can either throw another error or inform the user that there's something missing. But that should be enough to get the UI working and not throwing any errors in the console now. So let's go back over there and have a look. Uh, and if we just type in anything into the uh, JSON string field, you can see we just get an empty object logged out to the console. And as I say, it's up to you what type of uh, message or how you actually handle that error within the catch block. So let's have a look at the second example, which is when you're dealing with network requests. So if you're using the Fetch API to grab some data from an API or a third party service, uh, you might be getting back some JSON data, which you then parse and use within your app. And this is probably the more common use case because uh, generally what's going to happen is if the network request fails or if the network request has been set up incorrectly in your app, you're going to get something which isn't JSON back and then when you try and parse it, you get the errors thrown. So at the moment this is all working okay. We're sending a request to um, just an endpoint that I've got set up locally and we're passing back this data uh, from the uh, API that's been created. And let's just have a look at the code that does that. So here we're just fetching data from an endpoint called users. We're getting the result and then we're logging that out to the console first of all before calling the JSON function uh, on the resulting object. And that should do a json.parse function for us uh, and actually get the valid JSON. And then what we're doing is just putting that back into the UI elements, but we're actually catching any errors as well. So we should find that if there's any errors that are generated from this process, uh, they should be shown in the UI as well. So let's just change this to a route that doesn't exist in the API that I've created. So if we go back to the uh, example app, you can see this is the common sort of error that you might see where we're getting this syntax error uh, because the JSON function that we're calling on the response object uh, that's given back to us is actually, uh, it's not valid JSON. And you can see that from here. Uh, it, actually, if we look in the network request, you can see the exact data that's being returned for us. It'll just be a, uh, a string. So you can see the actual string that we get back is just saying cannot get forward slash bad because that route doesn't exist in the API that I've set up. So that's an example of when this might occur. And as soon as you see doc type uh, within the error message as well, you can be pretty sure that you're just trying to access a route that doesn't exist. But whatever the error message you're getting, you still need to deal with this because you can see uh, that we're getting no uh, JSON data back from this. So we can actually look at the response object that's returned from the initial call to the fetch API. And you can see we're getting a 404 because the route doesn't exist. Uh, but we've also got some uh, other bits of information on here, uh, such as the OK property. So from here, we can see that the response that we got wasn't OK. It wasn't a good response that we were expecting. So what we could do in our code, instead of trying to do a, a try catch, we could just check whether this OK property is uh, true or false uh, and then do something according to the value of that. So let's go back to the code. So inside of here, result is going to be the... Uh, response object that we just saw there a moment ago. So we could say, if the result is falsy, if it's not okay, uh, then what we could do is just throw a new error. And we could just say something like, not JSON data. And we could also put in some additional information from the response object, uh, such as uh, the status text which if we have a look in the console again, it's just going to say not found for us. So by throwing this new error, uh, we can then jump straight to this catch block down here, which will put the error into the UI for us. Uh, but also it kind of pa uh, passes by the result.json function here. So we're not going to get any errors uh, when we try and ch uh, parse the JSON that's not actually there. But if the result is okay, if the result is good, uh, this error won't be thrown. And then we can continue to try and parse the uh, JSON data as we normally would. So this is just one example of how you might handle it. 
uh, and let's have a look in here. So we can see that the error that we're seeing in the UI now, we've caught the error in that if statement. And of course we can do other things within our app as well, depending on what uh, we want to do if the network request fails. There are a couple of other things that you could do with the response object. You can see if we look at the response object that we've got here, if we store it as a global variable, and we'll look at the actual headers that we've got, there is an entries and values uh, property or function on there that you can use. Uh, and if we just spread that out into an array, you can see uh, that we get information about the headers that have, have been returned on the response. So you can also check for this application JSON content type header uh, to see if the response has returned JSON data, although it's not really a guarantee that there is actually JSON data in there, but it's just another thing that you can check. So if you want a more in-depth detailed overview of the json.pars function, then you should check out this next video where I go in depth on how the json.pars function works. But that's all you really need to know about handling errors with json.pars. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.